chemistry students. Today we're going to continue talking about compound stoichiometry, specifically two-step dimensional analysis. So first we're going to talk about our mole map. And at the heart of the mole map is the mole. And this number right here is Avogadro's number, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And you're going to use that number if you want to get to particles of something. Now, when we talk about particles, we are talking about atoms, formula units, or molecules. Now, if we start at the mole and we want to get to atoms, then we are going to use this number to get there, which is Avogadro's number. I'm going to write that up here. Avogadro's number, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Now, if we want to get to mass, and the units of mass is always grams, when we're talking chemistry, we are going to use molar mass. Now how we use this mole map is if we start with atoms and we need to get to the grams of something, let's say we have atoms of oxygen and we need to get to the grams of oxygen, we have to use Avogadro's number to get to the mole of oxygen, and then we have to use molar mass of oxygen to get to the grams of oxygen. Or let's say, for instance, we start out with the grams of sodium chloride, and we need to find out how many formula units of sodium chloride we have for a certain amount of grams. Well, we would have to use molar mass to convert to moles, and then after we get to our moles, we have to use Avogadro's number to convert to formula units. So basically, the mole is at the heart of the mole map. Now let's talk about our representative particles. Elements, except diatomics, and remember di means two atoms, diatomics, two atoms. So the representative particles of elements are atoms. The representative particles of diatomic elements, and examples of those are O2, N2, H2, I2, etc. Those are molecules because they are covalently compounded together. A molecular compound is also, the representative particle is also called a molecule. So when we talk about molecular compounds, we're talking about molecules. Ionic compounds, the uh, representative unit are formula, or representative particles are formula units. Now the abbreviations for atoms is just atoms. The abbreviations for molecules is MLCL, that stands for molecules, MLCL. The abbreviation for formula units is FU. Okay, first type of substance we have is magnesium. It is an element and it's a monatomic element. So I'm gonna put monatomic here, element. So its representative particle would be atoms. Our next type of substance is H2, that is a diatomic. And the representative particle for diatomics are molecules. Our next type of substance is H2O, which is water. That is a covalent compound. And the representative particle for a covalent compound is a molecule. Our next type of substance is NaCl, that is an ionic compound, and the representative particle for that is a formula unit. Our next type of substance is C6H12O6, and by the way, that is glucose. 
That is a covalent compound. And the representative particles for covalent compounds are molecules. In a two-step dimensional analysis problem, the first thing you must do when doing any conversion is convert to moles. You must always convert to moles because remember, moles is the heart, is at the heart. So you have to go to the heart first. You need to convert to moles. So our first problem is, how many atoms are present in a pure iron nail that weighs 13.2 grams? So the first thing you're going to do, remember, is you take the number that you're given and you put it in the upper left-hand corner of your dimensional analysis grid. So 13.2 grams of pure iron and the, the chemical formula for iron is just Fe. Okay, now we eventually want to get to atoms, but we cannot go directly from grams to atoms. If you look at your mole map, we cannot do that. The first thing we have to do is go from grams to moles. So we're going to do moles of iron. And then once we get to moles of iron, we can then go to atoms of iron. So that's what we're going to do. Atoms of iron. What we want to end up with is always on the far right hand side. All right, so we need to get rid of this grams of iron and how to do that since it's on top over here, we need to put it on bottom over here. We now need to get rid of moles of iron and in order to do that, since it's on top here, we put it on bottom here. Now our grams of iron are gonna go away because there's one on top and one on bottom. Our moles of iron are gonna go away because there's one on top and one on bottom and we are left with atoms of iron, which is what we want to be left with. Now we have to figure out what we're gonna put in these boxes right here. Okay, and we can look at the units to figure that out. We have moles per gram or grams per mole. That should be a big hint right there that we use molar mass. So we are gonna use molar mass of iron right there. Now atoms per mole or mole per atoms. Atoms per mole, that's the same thing as particles. Atoms are the same thing as particles. So what goes right here is Avogadro's number. That's what we're going to use right there. Okay, now let's find our molar mass of iron, Fe. Iron has 55.85 grams per mole, grams per mole. So I need to know, does this number go on top or does this number go on bottom? Well, since the units for, for um, average atomic mass is grams per mole, we're going to put this 55.85 next to the grams. So it's going to be 55.85 grams per one mole. Now over here, we need Avogadro's number, and that happens to be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles per mole. And we're not talking about or our particles, we are gonna use atoms. So our particles are actually atoms. So that means we need to put it up here because per mole means per one mole, for every one mole. So we have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of iron in one mole of iron. And if we multiply 13.2 times 1 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and we divide that by 55.85, we are going to get 1.45 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of iron. And that is our answer. Okay, now let's do the next one. How many, this should say many, I apologize, grams of magnesium chloride does 6.25 times 10 to the 25th formula units contain? So the number that we're given, or that we start out with, we always put on the far left-hand side. So 6.25 times 10 to the 25th formula units of magnesium chloride. 
Hopefully you guys know that magnesium chloride is MgCl2. All right, we need to end up with grams, but as you know from the mole map, we cannot go from formula units to grams directly. We have to go to moles first. So I already know I'm gonna have moles of magnesium chloride. And then once I go to moles, then I can go to grams. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go to grams of magnesium chloride. Now I need to get rid of this formula units of magnesium chloride and the best way to do that is to put it down here on the bottom. So formula units of magnesium chloride. And then once I do that, I need to get rid of this moles of magnesium chloride and I've got one on top, so I'm gonna put it over here on the bottom. Now when I do that, we've got formula units of magnesium chloride on top and formula units of magnesium chloride on bottom, they go away because they cancel each other out. I've got moles of magnesium chloride on top and moles of magnesium chloride on bottom so I can cancel them out. We are left with grams of magnesium chloride and that's what we wanna be left with. So now let's look at here. Our units tell us moles per formula unit or formula unit per mole will tell you what number you're going to put here. Formula unit per mole tells me that I'm gonna use Avogadro's number. Over here, we've got grams per mole or moles per gram. Grams per mole should be a big hint that you are going to use molar mass. So we're gonna use the molar mass of magnesium chloride right there. Okay, Avogadro's number, the first one is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. And right here, we're gonna use formula units, okay? So where do I put it? Do I put it on the top or do I put it on the bottom? Well, this is formula units per one mole. And if it's per one mole, that means the one goes next to the mole and the formula units, the 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd goes next to the formula units. Now we gotta find molar mass. I apologize for this uh, overlap here. Magnesium is 24.31, and we have one. And chlorine is 35.45, and we have two chlorines. So plus two times 35.45. That equals 95.21 grams per mole. Okay, so do I put that number up here on top or down here on bottom? It says grams per mole, which is per one mole, so I'm gonna put it on top, 95.21 grams per one mole. Now I just multiply 6.25 times 10 to the, that should be a 25, not a 15 times one times 95.21 divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and that equals 9.88 times 10 to the third grams of magnesium chloride. Now I would like for you to pause the video and try the next two practice problems on your own and then come back and check your answer. Okay, check your answer. Now I'd like for you to pause and uh, do this practice problem and then come back and check your answer. Go ahead and check your answer. Now I'd like for you to pause the, the video and do this one last practice problem and then check it. Go ahead and check your answers. 7.27 pounds of mercury chloride.